Hello and very welcome to a very very hot day here in Visby and it's hot I don't like that but good thing is there's a big focus on water these days which I really like. Now I've made this video about risk analysis in general uh, a part due to this fall when I have my students in advanced drinking water treatment and I thought they can have a look at it before we start the work with uh, risk analysis part in, in the course and little group work and case studies and so forth and so on. But also uh, the video is of course general information which I hope uh, someone more than me and hopefully my students will enjoy. So if you have any comments or thoughts or questions uh, write them in the comment field and I will answer uh, as good as I can if need be. So, enjoy the video. Take good care. See you soon again. Bye-bye. Water is our most important food. So, it's very important that we protect it from being contaminated when it is produced and distributed to our households. On the right-hand side, I have just taken one of many articles which you can find from all countries globally about what the status or the risks are with drinking water contaminations. Today's presentation or short video I have labeled what can happen from intake point to tap. I'll go through very briefly in general how to make a risk analysis and in the end we'll talk a little bit about HACCP. So what can cause contamination? Three things. First of all microbiology, chemicals, and something I labeled physical stuff. But before we go into what they contain, we'll have a look at where and how contamination can happen in the production chain from intake to tap. So where can the contamination occur? Let's start from the beginning. We have the raw water, be it surface water or groundwater. Surface water is of course more exposed. If you imagine you have a lake where you have grazing cattle close by, you have the feces that could contaminate the, the raw water source. Also, if you have a road close by, for instance, accidents with oil and, and, and things like that. Uh, groundwater, on the other hand, is very well protected, but it could also happen to be contaminated, for example, with flooding, where the water, flood water, gets in the well from above. So, you have some risks in the raw water intake as well that you have to identify and handle. Now, let's go to the waterworks. The waterworks now here we know that we have several different treatment methods you can have flocculation sedimentation sand filtration you can have membranes for for example ultra filters nano filters or ro reverse osmosis membranes you can have ozone you can have carbon filters you can have slow sand filtration of course there are many different types of unit operations, for example, sand filtration, membrane filtration, that can be combined with each other. So there's a multiple of different setups of the, the, the waterworks and the treatment process. In that, you can also have contamination. But here is the place where you can really stop the contaminants. And of course, it's the waterworks. It should take away everything you don't want to come in the drinking water. But waterworks comes after raw water, of course. Now, next piece will be the distribution network. Here, you can imagine we have a very large piping network, which sometimes break and you have to mend. What happens when you go down into open ditch and you repair a broken pipe? There is always a risk for contamination when you open a pipe and you're down in a... In a, in a in a, in a ditch. But again, there are routines to handle this, routines to clean up, routines to start up the, the new pipe again. 
Also, you might have high reservoirs where, where you store the water in order for, for fire, but also in order of a power cut where you can feed uh, drinking water by gravity for some time to the, to, the, to the consumers. But high reservoirs could also be contamination risk. For example, if you have an opening that is not protected from, from bird feces. So, raw water, the waterworks and distribution networks. All of these pieces you need to think before, before you get to the distribution to the consumers. So how do you go about doing a risk analysis? Identifying potential risks and handling. One basic and very important and very obvious thing is that you do this work together. Operation personnel, management in all the different parts of the water production. So, how do we go about this? Well, I made a simple table in Excel. You have two headings, you have type, and you have where can they be found? Raw water, slash water work, slash distribution network, dash prevention. Now, in the beginning, I said we have three different type of general contamination threats, microbiological, chemicals, and physical. Now, microbiological, you divide into viruses, for instance, hepatitis A, bacteria, for example, salmonella, or parasites, for example, cryptosporidium. But everyone who's worked with drinking water knows there are several, several more type of microbiological threats Chemicals, again, you have several chemicals in the uh, water work. For me, to mention one, you have sodium hydroxide. Physical contamination risks are, for instance, broken glass, but for instance, you can also look at corrosion where you get small particles losing from the pipes, which you don't want out in the distribution network. Going through, looking over your raw water source, looking over what type of microbiology threats you have, what type of chemicals that can come down, and what type of physical threats you have. For the raw water, uh, you have maybe cattle close to the, to the raw water, you might have uh, boats, you might have big roads where you can have accidents, uh, you can have sewage treatment plant that have their uh, discharge into your surface water, which is actually the sewage water treatment plant's recipient. So, here you have different sources for microbiology, for chemicals, or even physical, looking at the raw water. Now, going to the waterworks, uh, there again, as I said before, you have many different types of processes. And here you mainly look at what comes in from the raw water, of course. But there are also potential risks within the waterworks. For instance, a... Uh, pump that is running out of control with either acid or, or uh, sodium hydroxide. That could be a potential threat. But in the waterworks, you also look at how to stop the microbiology threats, the chemical threats, the physical threats uh, that you need to handle. I won't go in detail here, but as I said before, many different type of processes. And here in the waterworks, you need to go through so you have a good control of how to stop them and as we'll get to in the next slide do we have any means of online control if something should go go wrong we'll get to that in the next slide though distribution network here we have many times old distribution networks which could pose a problem with low turnover in the in the in the pipes with the water so long standing water that could pose a, a growth threat for bacteria. You might have high reservoirs where you can get uh, maybe some birds and you haven't protected the, the, the air inlets. You can get bird feces down in, in the reservoirs. And there has been some really bad example where they have had restaurants on top of water reservoirs where actual sewage water has been able to leak down in the, in the, in the, in the, in the reservoir, high reservoir. But again, th that is maybe an extreme example. But again, just shows that you need to go through every possible way that a contaminant could 
get in the system. When you know that, you can also make good prevention and, and minimize the risk. So let's go on to look more in detail of the waterworks, how we can prevent or handle the potential risks. CCP or means of an early warning system, an online system. What do I mean by that? First, remember all the points, the raw water, the waterworks, the distribution network where contaminants can be found. Now, when you look at an early warning system, you need to find a measurement of some parameter or indicator of that something is wrong. Now, a CCP is actually translated to critical control point. And an example of that is when we talk about bacteria and viruses and maybe looking at the waterworks. If you have a UV, you know that that kills off bacteria and viruses to some extent. And if you have a UV as part of a barrier in your waterworks, you know that if that barrier falls out or something is wrong with it, then you have a potential threat. Then you can't disinfect the bacteria and viruses that you want to get rid of. So if you have in the UV a measurement of the intensity, which you normally has, and something is wrong with the intensity, you get an alarm and you can stop production. So that could be a type of critical control point or early warning system. It's not actually warning for specific bacteria and viruses, but it will warn you that one of the barriers towards bacteria and viruses are failing. Chlorination. Again, disinfection. If the chlorination gets too low, and you have an online measurement of chlorine, this will give you an alarm of too low chlorine in your system. This could also be a critical control point. With that, I will talk a little bit about one of the tools for risk analysis. Guidance tool for analysis of risk and its abatement or minimizing the risk. Well, we talked about the raw water, we talked about waterworks distribution network and that you can have contaminants in all of these three parts before you reach the consumer. And of course, we need to get them away. Now, here in Sweden, we have a special tool or I should say a handbook that is based on international studies and, and HACEPs or hazardous uh, investigations in general. And uh, this is a handbook and not only does it contain the structure to make the risk analysis within the water production chain, it also contains the guidelines to have a self-control program in, in operations. Basically <clears throat> routines from, from cleaning to start up the plant, routines from receiving chemicals, so forth and so on. Now in this book, uh, you have the HACCP and that is of course hazard analysis that we started talking about in the beginning and finally looking at the critical control point. So with that I will go to the last picture which of course is a beautiful picture from uh, a trip I made to Italy together with my wife and a very good friend this year. And it's only right now, it's only some days ago I came back. Uh, but it was a very nice trip. And uh, there are some incredible mountains and views in this area in the Dolomites. With that, I will say thank you. And don't forget, water really rocks. Take good care and bye-bye.